Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Price List Update Summary Video Series, brought to you by Actionable Insights. You've got Harrison here, and you've got Wadley there, and we have two new line items to look at in the Xactimate price list that were added in February 2023. Wadley, this is a busy month for us. We've got two big conferences. Last week, we were at the Verisk Elevate Conference. Now, to be real, we are recording this before we go to the Elevate Conference, but wow, what an amazing conference it was. It was so great seeing all of you. Hopefully, you had a chance to check us out in the solutions gallery, talking about exact expert in the actionable profile. But if you missed us, we'll, we, we will be in Anaheim next week at the RIA's AGA networking event. Actionable Insights will be speaking about how slow deaths accelerate, the fear of artificial intelligence, and talking about what is now possible with our live estimating guidance inside of Xactimate while you write in the actionable profile. Um, um, in addition, I will be interviewing the vice president of the pricing department, Greg Pine. So he's flying out to Anaheim. And so we are going to hold down the keynote and go through uh, some of the questions that are on the mind of our membership. Um, yes. So we'll hear right from the horse's mouth how we, I mean, what their take is on things like the, the new construction uh, check box. Um, right. And when ONP may or may not be warranted, what's the history and future around that? Some of those hot button issues. Um, Greg Pine's going to provide some some perspective and, and guidance for those in attendance. So it should be a cool event. And it's rather unique in so much as it's only 50 bucks uh, to register. And oh. so I think it's pretty highly produced for that kind of price structure. So certainly if you're in SoCal, get out there. Um, Come hang but, out. But otherwise, there's there's definitely like I just I keep getting texts from like pretty big hitters like flying in um, throughout the nation. So should be a decent event. I could be biased with the keynote and then Harrison, you in Marting, hold yeah, it down we're gonna be there. Uh, later we're in gonna the speak. evening. Yeah. Should be good, man. It's going to be good. Come out next Wednesday. Wednesday. That's uh, February 15th. Wednesday. Uh, come out. Come hang out with us. All right. Uh, lastly, my social media team keeps reminding me that I need to say this on videos. Hey, do you follow us on YouTube? If you do or don't, you should. You should click the bell and subscribe. And by the way, to the gentleman that commented earlier this week uh, complaining about the ad, the guy in the ad on our YouTube video, uh, yeah. number one, we don't control the ads on our YouTube video. Sorry that the ad sucked. Not my, yeah. not my fault. Sorry, though. And uh, <laughs> if you click the bell and subscribe, we will turn off all ads on our videos as soon as we qualify. We're this close. So, you just got to, I think we need more watched hours on YouTube. Yeah. So if you just watch this video on yeah. YouTube, just stop, stop right now and go to YouTube and watch it. Uh, we'll turn the ads off as soon as we can. So sorry we're about trying. that bad ad. We're working on it. Okay. Wally, let's talk Xactimate. There were two new line items that were added to the Xactimate price list this month. I have here X1 desktop open. And let's take a look at the first line item here. It is in the ELS category, ELS, S-E-C-K-R-S. Now, RS selector codes typically means detach and reset. And this line item is the commercial security system keypad detach and reset. Now we've had commercial uh, security system keypads before, but we actually never had a detach and reset activity. So you'll see changes to some of the existing line items around commercial security system keypads, but we now have a dedicated line item S E C K R S for the keypad detach and reset line item. The other new line item this month, Again, in electrical related, this is in the ELE category this time, OSSH. This is for a humidity sensor slash fan control switch. All right. So there were two line items that were added to the Xactimate price list this month, uh, both in electrical related. If you need a com commercial security system keypad detach and reset, they've got you. If you need a humidity sensor fan control switch, they've got you. Yeah. Okay. Now. Uh, let's take a look at what actually happened this month to existing line items. Not only does the pricing department at Xactimate and various property estimating solutions provide, add new line items to the price list every month, they also change existing line items. So let's start here. On the left side, I have an ESX with the January 2023 price list. On the right side, February 2023 price list. And let's take a look at the differences between line items last month and line items this month. We have... E-L-E-S-E-C-K. This is the security system. E-L-S, S-E-C-K is for the commercial security system keypad. Now, the yields change. If you've ever followed Actionable Insights, you know we love tracking yield changes. Why? 
Yield has an inverse relationship with the price of a line item. Yield meaning productivity. When productivity goes up, the price goes down. When productivity goes down, the price goes up. So you'll see on the left side for the security system keypad in January, it was $3.91 to remove it. Now it is $9.48. That's almost a 200% jump in that, in that price. So let's go ahead and well, take a Well, that's a detach and reset. Uh, no, this is for the removal line item. Oh, you, this is the I removal follow. activity code for the yep. ELE SECK. So take a look at the right. unit. Let's take a look at the unit prices here to see what actually changed in the direct yield. The direct yield used to be 26.568. Now it's 11. And so for those that are unfamiliar with direct yields, direct yield is essentially in a perfect, clean environment with no distraction and no obstacles. How much of something can somebody do in an hour? And then we go look at the unit, right? Uh, the unit of this particular line item is each. So in January, the uh, line item basically said that uh, a demo technician can remove 26 and a half of these security system keypads in an hour. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Flying around the house doing 26 of those, those things. Um, now it's down to 11, which I think is a little bit more reasonable, a little bit more fair. Uh, of how productive can you be? Yeah, but when the supporting event delta is assigned to it, the actual yield, which I think should be called yes. net yield, is on, is down to six. So that starts to make more sense. It's like, okay, so could you versus sixteen six of these? Like that starts to reconcile with reality. Yep, yep. Well said. Uh, three other yield changes this month. I actually think this is probably the biggest change this month that people are, would be interested in. So like, if you're still watching, you made it to the good part. Nice work. Um, ceiling and painting cabinetry. Full height cabinetry, lower cabinetry, upper cabinetry, PNT FH, PNT low, PNT up. Okay. We're talking ceiling and painting cabinetry line items. Price went up. And this is the yield section. So we know in order for the price going up, the yield must have gone down. And we take a look at PNT FH here. On the left side in January, the only thing that changed here yield-wise is the labor. Back in January, it was 2.5 linear feet of full height cabinetry you could seal and paint inside and out per hour. Now it's down to about 2.2. And while they, in preparation for this call, I was asking about your experience with sealing and painting cabinetry. Like, why do you think that the pricing department re-looked and revisited the ceiling and painting cabinetry line items and have adjusted the yield down? Because contractors are unwilling to do it for the price structure with an Xactimate and carriers would prefer that restorers go extract three linear feet of lower cabinets, let's say, and then they just strip and refinish. Or in this case, uh, what, what is it, these line items? These are seal and paint cabinetry. If you're a restorer, like you recoil from that <laughs> because we've all had way more nightmarish experiences with trying to strip and refinish cabinetry than good outcomes. It is very difficult to strip and refinish cabinetry to a policyholder satisfaction or even reconcile with pre-loss condition. And there's reasons for that. Um, older cabinetry, say from the 70s, right, like oak style cabinetry, like the wood was higher grade. It was easier for us to like sand down, refinish and and uh, uh, deal with when we've gotten more petroleum based products and MDF and a thermal foil toe kicks, like they're more precarious to work with. They're harder to restore. And so I, I think this is just that juxtaposition of like carriers uh, attempt to constrain indemnity and like, Hey, now we should refinish the cabins. We don't want to strip and refinish them. Uh, we don't want to replace them. Um, but I'm not sure. And I've seen a lot of times, Harrison, in a claim settlement environment, this is something for like IA staff and justice to keep in mind. Like I've seen a lot of program contractors be like, okay, like I don't think it's feasible, but we'll do it. And then they do it and it's not satisfactory, like at least to the policyholder's satisfaction. So that the carrier ends up having to pay twice because uh, ultimately the cabinets get all replaced. And we've been importing cabinets from yeah. China so cheap over the last 15 years it, it just wasn't practical often to try to like extract the lowers and have those match the lowers, much less the uppers. Mm -hmm. It just made more sense to straight away uh, replace them. And so I think that's the marketplace like moving towards like recognizing that it's very difficult to perform this, this function. So Therefore, it's good to see. Goes down. Yeah. It's good to see the price change here, but Oh boy, as a restorer, we all like recoil from like, 
I got to strip and refinish these. Like, okay, e- fingers crossed. It, yikes. It, I remember <laughs> policyholders like looking down our cabinets like with a flashlight going, oh, oh yeah. there's, there's a holiday here. Like That that's... and level five drywall flashlights. The yeah. smooth wall, flashlight down the wall. No, no, no more. No, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, holders. good. Um, that's it for yield changes this month. The only other line item change that happened this month is around FRM, the framing category, ULAC. That's the additional charge for underlayment and confined spaces. And they've updated this confined space line item specifically around the additional item information, which I found to be very interesting. And basically, they are expanding the definition of what a confined space is or should be or how to how to look at it. And specifically here, we have... It used to say item is intended for an additional labor charge for when a framer has to install underlayment in confined areas, such as bathrooms or around kitchen cabinets. Now it says uh, install underlayment in confined or small areas where excessive cutting may be required or the space is difficult to work in, such as bathrooms, closets, around kitchen cabinets, and low clearance. So Watley, when you and I have historically talked about confined spaces, we're looking at small rooms. We're looking at basically you can't stand up. That's kind of like the, the, yeah. the back of the napkin math of what's a confined space. Well, I'm six foot three, and if I can't stand and forget up, talking it's about space. it, let's just talk <laughs> about um, talk talk about the forty rules for confined space within the actionable profile. That's if the point. short wall is less than four feet, you're going to see an alert for all the relative line items for working in a confined space. That's fine, but what this new update clarifies is like it's not just a ceiling height what they're referring to. They're, they're talking about working in maybe a sub 50 square foot bathroom where you're working around like a toilet flange and a vanity and so on. And there's going to be excessive cutting. It's just difficult to get that plywood in there and make that happen. Um, so that's kind of a different way to think about confined space when, yeah, if this uh, is as much space as I have to work in, I would yeah. consider it confined. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So, so this it, is, it, this is interesting. Yeah, it's nice to have that expanded definition to get over to bypass the semantics of that's not what that landed on for is for. Well, actually, it is. So, yep. clarity is clarity, and we we usually like it when Verisk's pricing department does a good job of clarifying. You got it. So, what you guys will see in the next month is a new rule for when the room name is bathroom or closet or kitchen, and it's less than fifty square feet. It will remind you that this additional charge for underlayment may be warranted. At some point, we realized that watching the thousands of hours of these videos over the course of the last decade is untenable. And so how do we download that all into uh, an estimate in real time, especially for a more junior estimator? We just built the AI and gave you guys what essentially you're asking for, which is the real-time guidance within the estimate. And so you can see has an outcome of these interactions, right? This is preparatory for you going in the lab with your team and and building rules to guide your membership towards good outcomes. Yep. That's what we're here for. So uh, that's all the changes to the exact May prices in February, 2023. If you want to be reminded about those changes every day when you're estimating, go check out the actionable profile. You start writing your estimates in the actionable profile. We will provide you live estimating guidance that reacts to your scope while you write in an exactimate. That means no more missed line items and no more estimating mistakes. No more overages actively- that are going to like undermine your ability to settle that claim unencumbered. As yeah. soon as you include line items that are mutually exclusive and like clearly shouldn't have been included in your scope, you've undermined your credibility. And now you're on your heels as a restorer or even IA and you're getting pushed around by the staff adjuster and rightfully so. So the actionable profile constrains, you know, the, the overages and omissions with no particular bias. We are now off to the rest of con February. Can I use that wildly conference February con February? Mm. Oh. Yeah, surety is going to be at four conferences. You're talking about two for actionable con so, February. This is conference season for sure, <laughs> buddy. I'm going to be on a plane a whole heck of a lot. Um, All right. So Uh, we're going to do some stuff. Looking forward to it. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Again, please like, share, subscribe, Facebook, YouTube, all the places, Instagram, Reddit, uh, LinkedIn. My goodness. So many opportunities to follow Twitter. So many opportunities to follow our content. I'm on Uh, TikTok. I think. Watley's on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. Don't find me there. But in the meantime, good luck settling all those claims out there. Keep building.